So the official Xenoblade Twitter account has revealed a ton of information over the past couple of days. And we got even more news with the Xenoblade Note Volume 2 releasing. And in today's video we'll be doing a news roundup. As well as dive into some secrets I found in the newly revealed content. So the Xenoblade Twitter account has revealed some interesting things since the reveal of the trailer. First of all, we got the art of all the Euroboros forms, as well as a little description. The description given for Noah and Mio's Ouroboros, as well as Lance and Senna's Ouroboros, aren't really anything special. But for Uni and Tyan's Ouroboros, we do have something interesting. It says that in this form, Uni and Tyan have a powerful recovery art that can revive all allies who have been incapacitated. So as long as you keep your healers alive, you can turn the tides of a battle with a special art. Now we have a little scene of the party summoning their weapons. The caption states, Keeves and Agnes soldiers can also summon their own weapons. These are called blades. Blades are created according to the characteristics of the summoner. It can be swords, guns, shields, hammers, etc. So it seems like blades are returning, but have a different meaning in this world. We know that Mio and Senna have core crystals like blades in Xenoblade 2. So I wonder how they are referred to now. The next video shows us the start of a battle. The caption basically says that you can choose whether to engage with lifeforms in the open world just like in Xenoblade 1 and 2. I've talked about most things shown in the combat in my combat video already. But one thing I haven't talked about is this button right here. This button allows you to sheet your weapon, so you probably have to hold A to stop engaging in battle. The next post shows us the mysterious monster, and the caption confirms that the monster does not belong to Keeves or Agnes. Now we see a character overview of Guernica Fandam. There's nothing we didn't know yet in this post, however we do get a full body art of Fandam. Next up, we get this post about how roles are divided into attackers, defenders and healers. We also get these cute chibi artworks for the main cast. The next three posts show off the different roles with a small video. First up, attackers. Attackers are strong at dealing damage to enemies and can aim to do large damage by attacking the backs slash sides of enemies. While attacks are key to the team's offense, they have a clear weakness in that they are often targeted by enemies. It is important to ensure that you are able to attack from an advantageous position while evading the enemy's attacks. There are a few things to notice in this video. We can see that everyone except Noah is in the defender circle which protects them. We'll go more into that later. So either the AI is very smart this time around, or you can command your party to stay within the circle using the tactics menu. Other than that we can see the enemy die quite quickly, so that may suggest that fights can finish rather quickly unlike Xenoblade 2, where fights could be a bit lengthy. We can also see some items fly out when the enemy dies. So chests from Xenoblade 1 will not be returning, thank god. Now we have Defenders. <laughs> defenders are good at dodging and evading, attracting the enemy's attention and taking attacks so their allies don't have to. Attackers and healers are easier targets for the enemy, so Defenders are very important. In this video we can see Mio, Sana and Noah are all in the attacker class, so you can have more than two members with the same class. Mio also has her normal clothing, while using a different class, so you can probably choose whether you want to switch outfits. You can also see multiple party members dash a lot, and it seems like you can dash repeatedly as well. Last up we have healers. Yeah, 
healers are able to recover their allies HP, as well as support their offense and defense. They can also revive incapacitated allies. Healers play an important role, as without them, allies HP would steadily decrease, as they are attacked by the enemy. In this video a lot happens, but most of it is nothing new. We do however, hear a new battle team. And we see some kind of item on screen, but it's hard to tell what it is. Next we see a post regarding aggro lines. A red line indicates that an attacker or healer is being targeted, and a blue line means that the defender is being targeted. Now we see a little chart of how the role should be played. And here we have what we've all been waiting for, the full body art for Ethel. The caption notes that there is a famous story of how Ethel defeated 3 colonies with only 100 soldiers. It also says that there is no one in Keeves who doesn't know Silver Ethel. Ethel has straightforward beliefs and is well trusted by her soldiers. And that wraps up the Twitter news. Now let's move on to the Xenoblade note. This is an article from Nintendo Japan that showcases various elements from Xenoblade 3. In this volume 2, we get a look into the basics of battle. The article repeats a lot from the tweets, so we'll only go into the new stuff. So the first new thing is the healing circle art of Uni. It creates a green circle on the field, and if you are inside the circle, you'll gradually heal over time. Healers are also the only ones who can revive incapacitated allies. And reviving takes a bit longer than before. Now, the dash mechanic is called quick move in Japanese. You temporarily sheet your weapon to move a certain distance at high speed. It is used to move around the enemy and get around quickly. In the video you can see Noah battling while zoomed in. He seems to use a move that can launch the enemy. And finally, we have confirmation on a highly requested combat feature, which is switching between allies during battle. You can switch between the 6 main party members at any time on the move or during battle. They only show gameplay of members switching while running in the overworld. So we'll have to wait until we can see the members switch during battle. In this video however, we can see that once you are close to an item orb, the orb's appearance changes to what type of collectible it is. This means that you can see what kind of item you pick up before you walk over it. This will probably make fetch quests easier as well. And that's all the news we got after the trailer. I think that this new combat system will be the best combat system we've seen in any Xenoblade game so far. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and I will see you all later.